How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC. I apologize for the lighting situation. It probably looks like I have my flash on filming this and that's because I do because I'm filming this a little bit later at night. Uh, I usually try to film my videos while there's still daylight. I have a window like right there uh, by my desk uh, that provides a lot of the better lighting for these videos. So uh, this is what we got to do when I film videos later. So I apologize for that, but bringing you guys a new, uh, a new Knives and Gear video. Um, I haven't done one of these in a little bit, and I have a couple things that I've gotten in recently that I wanted to share with you guys. So, jumping right into it, uh, these are um, these are from I, again. I'm going to butcher the name, and I really should ask him how I pronounce these. But it's uh, I think it's Epic Handmade or Epoch Handmade, E P O C H Handmade Leather. Um, there's his logo right there. So I don't know if that's pronounced Epic or Epoch, but. Uh, either way, a uh, really cool small leather maker on Instagram that I found, um, if you're familiar with his uh, personal account, Dirt Cheap EDC as well. Um, but really nice guy. He had sent some, st uh, I had ordered some product from him off of his website and then messaged him and said, hey, if there's anything else you want me to check out, uh, would you mind sending it along? So he sent me a couple things. I bought a couple things. Um, and I really liked them. If you guys saw the coin slip that I've been carrying or... Uh, the little leather organizer that I had for a while. Let's see if I actually have it right here. Uh, this guy right here. So as you can see, I carried and used that for a while as well. Uh, very nicely made. Um, but then uh, I had some uh, Coke tools that I was uh, I had put up for sale, and he asked if uh, I wanted to trade. And so he made me some leather stuff here. Uh, really what I, I wanted was a little leather slip for my uh, Knipex Cobra XS uh, channel locks. So... I, uh, I asked him if he can make me a little slip for those, which he gladly did, and then he uh, made me this as well, this little uh, this two-pocket slip, um, and this actually fit perfectly because this little slip joint here and a Bic lighter are two things I always keep in one of the breast pockets of my uh, denim jacket that I wear pretty much all the time. Um, and the, they happen to fit perfectly in there. So now I have an organizer for them so they're not falling around all over my pocket and I have to kind of dig them out. Uh, they stay kind of nice and neat in my right pocket like that. Um, so that's really cool. The leather is very nicely, uh, very nicely stitched. Uh, it's, it's very nice quality leather. Uh, it was nice and tight when I got it and now it's forming quite nicely to the tools. Uh, as you can see there, that's forming very nicely, nice retention on the tools, especially on the uh, the Knipex. You can kind of see if I can, when I put them in here, if you can see, almost hear it. Well, that didn't go very well, but they kind of click in now, and it's nice. There's good retention on them, and they're starting to form very nicely. The tools, overall, very impressed with his work. Uh, very much would encourage you guys to go check out his, uh, his Instagram page, his website. I'll leave product links down in the description. Um, but yeah, there I, in here, I just have this little artisan cutlery, uh, slip joint. I like having a nice, small, non-threatening knife option on me all the time. So no matter what knife I'm carrying, fixed blade folder, big, small, I always have this guy, um, as a backup. Um, and then I always like having a, a Bic lighter with me. So that works really well. And those just right in my coat pocket. And then I've been carrying these pretty much everywhere outside of, uh, outside of work. So very impressed with these, uh, Epic or Epoch leather, uh, or I think it's e handmade leather. Um, definitely go check them out guys. Really good stuff. Uh, what should we do next? Here is one that, uh, this is not mine. This is on loan from, uh, Wingard Wearables. Zach over at Wingard Wearables had sent this sent this over. I'm just borrowing it and uh, sent, actually sending it back soon, but I wanted to throw it up on video because there's not a ton of videos of this guy out in the wild, um, and I think it's a really, really cool knife. So this is the uh, Spyderco Fred Perrin collaboration. This is, I think this is the Street Bowie. Uh, the I think the Street B is the smaller version. Um, I had one of those a while ago, and I this one has like a rubber inlay on the handle. Uh, the other one is just the complete molded plastic handles, and I had actually stippled that one, um, which came out really cool, and then I sold it to a buddy who uh, I believe he still has it, but this is the bigger brother, this is the Street Bowie, uh, black, I think this is like a PVD coating, uh, VG10 blade, uh, injection molded handles with a rubber inlay, nice and comfortable in hand, I love Fred Perrin's styles of Bowie, where it's just, um, 
straight back, no guard, and then a deep finger choil. Uh, I know that can be uh, kind of a hang-up for some people, uh, no pun intended, it can be a hang-up for some people in terms of penetration. Uh, if this goes all the way in, some people worry about that guard uh, catching on whatever you're penetrating and not being able to get the knife back out. But on a long enough blade like this, I'm not really worried about penetrating down into the hilt. Um, so... But uh, yeah, very cool, very cool uh, Bowie design. It's very, very lightweight. If I grab my scale here, we can see exactly how light it is. So just under four ounces for a blade that's about, I was gonna say it was close to five inches long. Yeah, like a five inch blade and you're coming in under four ounces. So this is a great, uh, a great carry knife if you want to EDC a longer blade. Um, your stock thickness isn't overly thick. It comes down to a decently thin edge. Um, the edge isn't the sharpest, and I know uh, coming from Spyderco, usually their edges are pretty nice. But my one gripe with this is the sheath. Uh, one, if you can hear that, there's a lot of rattle. The retention is good. Like I have no, I have no worries about this falling out. It clicks in nicely. But as with pretty much all of Spyderco's fixed blade sheaths, uh, there is edge drag as you sheath and unsheath this knife. The edge drags on the edge of that sheath. And VG10 being a softer steel, I'm pretty sure that's what is dulling this edge. Um, I know Zach said when he gets this back for me, he's probably going to make a Kydex sheath for it. Um, and I think that's probably the way to go with either this or the Street Beat. Uh, is get, get an aftermarket sheath made. Uh, get one from Offensive Industries, get a leather sheath made, or uh, hell, you can make Kydex sheaths yourself. Uh, just simple fold over Kydex is not hard to do yourself. So um, I would definitely suggest an aftermarket sheath for these. But the knife itself is an awesome, awesome piece. Uh, really, really enjoyed uh, having this around. Um, again, I had the smaller one, but I think there's just, there's, there's just an appeal to a big knife like this that's so lightweight. Uh, be great to carry in that kind of like three o'clock uh, Bowie style where you kind of grab it and bring it out this way into a defensive uh, edge out forward grip. Um, but yeah, very cool knife. Uh, not sticking around, but glad I got to check it out. Uh, the next thing here is kind of a, a two in one. Uh, if you guys are in the gun community at all or the... Uh, like medical EDC side of the community at all, you probably have already seen these. These are the ETQ, the Everyday Tourniquet, uh, from Snake Staff Systems. Uh, they're a newer company on the market. They just launched these. They have the ETQ and the ETQ wide. Um, so you have like the, you have the I believe these are like an inch wide. Yeah. So they have an inch uh, inch wide version and an inch and a half wide version. So a little bit wider uh, on the band. Uh, but these are meant to be uh, tourniquets that are easily carried uh, every day. Because if you guys are familiar um, with like cat tourniquets and stuff like that, they are much bigger in size. I actually have one here close by. Here is your standard North American Rescue uh, cat tourniquet. Sorry, there's shit all over it because it was uh, this was actually on the buttstock of one of my rifles. Um, so there you can see the difference. This is not a big tourniquet as tourniquets go. Um, but this is a full-size tourniquet, and then you can see the ETQ next to that is very small, much easier to carry actually in a pocket. Um, I never, I almost never carried cat tourniquets on body. Um, I would occasionally carry them like in a jacket pocket, uh, like the inside jacket pocket, something like that. Uh, I don't ever really wear cargo pants. I know a lot of guys put these in like cargo pants pockets, but I never really wear cargo pants or cargo shorts, so... When these came out, I was super interested in checking them out just because of how small they are. Um, I don't have uh, an, a spare magazine on me with, and I don't really want to take my gun off right now, but these are the exact same size as a, uh, uh, a Glock 17 magazine. So if you're carrying a spare magazine already or you're carrying an extra folding knife or something, replace it with this, guys. Uh, it, medical is so important. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to have at least minim, uh, minimal uh, EDC medical on you if you're going to be carrying a gun or even a knife. Uh, if you're going to be willing to put holes in other people, you should be able to patch holes in yourself. So the the twofer kind of comes in here with this, and this is a uh, just an elastic pouch by, uh, I believe it's Wilderness Tactical Products. 
I saw a buddy had one of these, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, that is the solution I am looking for for carrying EDC Medical. Because before you guys probably saw, I was carrying this flat compressed gauze like this, and I just kind of had like a boo-boo kit. I still have that in here. I have some like band-aid kits in here. Um, but I was just carrying this, uh, and because my reason being was this is a little bit more versatile than just carrying a tourniquet, and look how much smaller and easier to pack away that is than carrying a full-size tourniquet. Now, I always have uh, one of these in my fanny pack. I often put one in my coat. I have a couple of these in the IFAC in my vehicle. So these are close by, but I was just carrying this. And so when I saw this come out, I was like, man, I would really like to start carrying this. I could probably put these together, throw them in my back pocket, uh, and they do fit in the back pocket. But I was like, man, I really wish there was something that I could do to kind of keep them together. And as soon as I saw this pouch, I knew that this was the solution that I was looking for. Um, this perfectly fits your standard flat compressed gauze uh, packet, as well as a uh, Snake Staff Systems ETQ. Not the wide, I don't think the wide will fit in here, but the one inch version fits in here very nicely. So you can see this one has been carried quite a bit. I have a Ranger Band on here just kind of keep it together. Uh, you can deploy these and the Ranger Band does come right off. Um, but yeah, so this has kind of been my EDC medical, my on-body EDC medical ever since I got these. Uh, I've just been carrying in my back pocket. Um, no problem so far. Uh, again, these are very new to the market, so approach with caution and a little bit of skepticism because they haven't been really proven in any like military or law enforcement application yet. Uh, they have some pretty extensive testing on their website, and I know they sent these out to a lot of people way smarter than me about uh, about medical and, and individual first aid kits, and a lot of them really like them. Um, I've applied these several times to myself on both arms and legs. Uh, you do, uh, it does stop your blood flow. Um, I'm not wearing them for hours at a time to obviously to know how they hold up uh, in applications like that. But just in applying them the standard way, I would practice with like a cat tourniquet. They seem to be doing well. Um, some of the features on these is you have a carabiner over the Velcro on most windless style uh, tourniquets. Um, obviously, it's much smaller. Uh, you have the carabiner, which is a little bit easier to just kind of pop the pop that in there after when you're done. Um, it also has this chem light here, which there's a set screw here. They are replaceable. Um, it has a chem light on here that it says it apply it, that it um, breaks automatically when you apply it. I haven't found that to be true. Um, but the point of this is like if you were in a more like survival situation, like if you had all these uh, one of these on you when you were hiking or if you were on like the side of the road in the dark and a first responder was looking for you and you had one of these applied, that would glow nice and bright for them to be able to see you. Um, one thing I've noticed carrying this in my back pocket is that, uh, it does break, um, break meaning it, it snaps and turns on. Um, so this isn't really a necessary feature for me, really. It's not a deal breaker. Uh, but I did buy a couple extra ones of these to swap them out. It's easy. You just loosen that set screw and then, uh, swap them in and out. But if you carry these in the back pocket, they will, uh, go off, uh, randomly, not a big deal. Uh, I, t I reached out to them and they basically said, yeah, don't carry them in your back pocket and it won't be a problem. To which I said, that's fair. And I continued to carry it in my back pocket because <laughs> I don't really care about the, uh, the chem light feature all that much. But it is cool and it is very well thought out. So again, approach these with caution, guys. They're new to the market. Uh, I, would, I would suggest maybe waiting for more testing. But as someone who does reviews uh, and who wasn't carrying an on-body tourniquet before this, I figured... Carrying one of these for testing was better than not having one at all, so why the hell not? Um, I still have plenty of cat tourniquets around. They're on all of my uh, chest rigs, bags. They're on the buttstocks of my rifles. They're on. They're in my car IFAC, in my fanny pack, so T take all of that with a grain of salt. Take it for what it's worth, but these are very cool. Snake Staff Systems, I'll link them down below. Uh, moving on after that horrendous rant that I just went on. <laughs> oh, boy. These are, you guys have probably seen these before. I'm really not showing you anything new here, but these are uh, Uncle Bill's sliver grippers. They're just these cool little EDC tweezers that can go on a keychain. Uh, the reason I got these was because I was building out a tiny little like pocket uh, medical kit and I wanted, or like kind of like a boo-boo kit, uh, band-aids, splinter stuff, that kind of thing. And I wanted a nice small pair of tweezers in there. Plus I wanted to throw a pair of tweezers on my keys 
uh, because I carry a Victorinox Classic on my keys, but those are notorious for losing the toothpick and tweezers. So, plus these are just a lot better than the ones that come in the Victorinox ones. They come to a nice fine point. They're nice and sturdy. They are made in the USA, which is very cool. And I've had no problems with the retention on these, like with them falling off or anything like that. I bumped them around, shook them. I've thrown my keys up in the air. I let them hit the ground. These have not come out. So that's good to know. But yeah, they're they're really cheap. I think they're like five, they're like five to eight bucks for like three of them. Um, so kind of like those old uh, like uh, surplus can openers. It's just a cool little thing to throw on your keys and it'll probably come in useful. Throw them in your med kits, that kind of thing. Uh, they'll probably come in handy eventually. So just thought that was something fun to throw in here. Next up, this is a little pouch from, oh, there's their logo, Zero Feud. If you guys have seen my uh, my little brass uh, twisted T bead, uh, that Zero Feud is the one who makes that. They also, they make a ton of cool patches and um, beads and stuff like that, but they also make these cool little zip pouches. Um, and I was obviously I'm if you guys haven't realized I'm, I'm never satisfied with carrying one wallet for too long I usually carry a wallet for a couple months and then I end up switching it out for something else If someone sends me something or I find something else cool. I'm not really into like really high-end wallets I don't think I've ever spent over like $75 on a wallet um, And these are these are pretty cheap. I think these are like under $20 actually I think they're around 20 bucks, but uh, cool little zipper pouch. I'm not going to open them too much and show you what's inside because I have my ID and my credit card and stuff just out. But it's just a simple zipper pouch. Uh, you can get them in all different kinds of colors. Uh, the inside is orange, so there's the high-vis contrast. Um, you could obviously use this for uh, if you got like a, <laughs> not a purple, but um, something more uh, earth tone or black or something like that. You can throw a battery or something, throw it in your kit. Uh, you can use it as a wallet like I'm doing. You can throw a little EDC gear inside it, your little flashlights and bit bars and stuff like that. Um, and then it has this cool, uh, I think this is like, is this like an inch and a, it was like inch and a half wide strip of Velcro here for Ranger eye patches or your longer thin patches. Um, I had this patch on here that I wanted to throw on here, so I knew it. So I got the purple, um, the uh, cancer one, and uh, my grandfather is currently battling uh, prostate cancer, which purple is the color for prostate cancer awareness. So I got the purple through that patch on there because uh, fuck cancer. Everyone can get behind that, right? Um, but yeah, cool little pouch, made very well. Stitching is well done. It's been durable uh, as far as I've seen. Uh, these tabs are... They're not like elastic, like, um, like we see them like Citizen E pouches and stuff. They're like an elastic, which I prefer. But again, because this is a wallet, I'm not really lashing this to anything. So I don't really care, but that's just something to look out for. This is just like a nylon. Uh, it's not stretchy at all. So you can't really stretch this to put pens in it or anything like that. Um, it's just kind of a lashing point if you wanted to lash it to a, a larger bag or put a lanyard on it or something like that. But the zippers are well done. They don't bind up at all. The Velcro is well done. Stitching is cool. Just a cool little patch uh, or pouch from Zero Feud. And it's always cool to have a wallet that you can throw patches on because we're nerds like that in this community. Last but certainly not least, this is from the company Beyond EDC. And this is a Dirk Pinkerton collaboration. Uh... If you guys are familiar with Dirk Pinkerton, you probably knew that as soon as you saw this from the lines on this thing. Uh, this is, I think it's the the Night Horse. Yeah, the Night Horse. Uh, the Night Horse Navaja. It's based on a Spanish Navaja knife, if you guys are familiar with those. Um, Kershaw, I think, has a similar uh, Navaja pattern knife, but this one is way cooler to me. And it's cheaper, and it's probably better built because Kershaw does not have a good track record in the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, this is by Beyond EDC. Dirk, I think, has some other collaborations with them. Uh, I've kind of seen that brand around, but hadn't checked anything out by them uh, until now. Um, and sorry, the lighting is making the smudging on this blade look absolutely horrendous, but the blade itself looks super cool. It's this cool, like, I don't even know if to call this like a trailing point because it's a straight back but it's like upswept. It's just a really cool blade shape. It's basically Dirk Pickerton's take on a Navaja. And you can have this cool uh, downswept handle. Obviously it's huge. So you can kind of have your like choked up grip, your middle grip, and then you can choke all the way back on it. Um, surprisingly enough, it's comfortable in pretty much all of your standard grips. You can even uh, do a reverse grip edge in with it, which is pretty cool. 
um, and there's enough texture and handle to grab onto here that I'm not really worried about thumb capping it. Like you can, but it's kind of awkward. Um, but you can do Pical grip with it, which is pretty cool, which I know uh, Dirk kind of uh, goes for with his knives as kind of being used in multiple grips, but it's on bearings, stupid smooth action. You're getting 14C 28N steel which is awesome to see. Uh, that's a great budget steel. I pretty much prefer 14C28N on uh, budget knives now. That and like 154 and Nitro V. Um, just a great budget stainless steel. Uh, I, I hate seeing D2 on budget knives anymore uh, just because it's such a cheap cop-out option. Um, and 14C is just such a better option. But the cool part about uh, a lot of a lot of knives that you're seeing with that kind of steel are in more of like the $50, $60 range. This guy comes in at $29.99. You're paying $30 bucks for this. You're getting this huge old knife. You're getting a big old chunk of 14C28N G10 handles, you know, deep carry pocket clip, bearing, super smooth action, nice thumb studs. Um, again, I might do a full review on this if you guys care. Uh, this is a brand new knife. It just released last week, I believe. So there's probably not a whole lot of videos on it. So I'll probably do a video on it. But it comes down to a decently thin edge. I believe it's a flat grind. I would have liked to see a hollow grind on it, but that's okay. Not really a uh, EDC-minded knife as much as it is more tactical, which not really my thing for tactical. I just got it because it was cool, and it was only 30 bucks, and I like Dirk Pinkerton, so... Uh, very cool. That, the thumb studs are oversized, which is cool. I wish they were a little bit higher. It just feels more natural for the thumb studs to be about here instead of back here, but the action is nice on it. Uh, I also probably would have preferred to have a not a deep carry clip, like have maybe about that much sticking out of your pocket, because for so, such a big knife, one, it's a pain to have that much down in your pocket when I'm carrying a folder. Like, I don't mind having a big old like offensive industry sheet down in my pocket because I'm carrying a fixed blade. That's what I'm doing. But with a folder, I don't really want all that in my pocket. And with a big knife like this, that's supposed to be for tactical purposes. I really wish there was more sticking out of your pocket for you to grab onto versus that where you kind of have to fish down in your pocket to grab it. But it does, uh, I can see why it's like that because when you kind of grab it out like that and move your hand, it puts you in a good spot to hit those thumb studs. So again, these are nitpicks. And this is not a full review of the knife. I just wanted to show it off because I thought it was really cool. You can get them in this brown G10, uh, green G10, or black G10, I think. And then I, they also have uh, some more expensive versions uh, in titanium handles, which are also very cool. Just not really my thing. I prefer simple. And again, 30 bucks. So anyways, guys, I'm going to pull some of this back on here on the screen. Uh, let, me get, let me know if you want full reviews on any of the stuff that is... Uh, that I mentioned. Uh, obviously, the Spider Co. is going back to its owner, but everything else is sticking around. So if you want to see reviews on anything else, let me know. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.